What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, in this edition, we're doing a deep dive into single replacement reactions. We're gonna talk about what they are, what they aren't, how they work, and ultimately, how do we predict what the products of one of these reactions are so we can write a correct balanced chemical equation. Let's get focused. I'm gonna ask you guys to put away your cell phones for the next 10 or 15 minutes, and also hit the subscribe button and like the video to support the channel, which is greatly appreciated. Let's get started. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Neil's not-so-boring world of chemistry. Let's go into the lab and take a deep breath. All right, so let's begin by talking about what a single replacement reaction is and how we can confidently identify one when we see it. The name gives us all the hints that we need. Single meaning alone. So in one of these reactions, you're always going to find one element that is completely isolated by itself uncombined. In this case, it's lithium. Now what is it going to replace? Single replacement reactions also feature a compound. And what actually happens in these reactions is the single uncombined element is going to replace or substitute one of the elements in the compound. Now in this case, lithium is going to replace the copper. So when we look at the products of this reaction, now we see that copper is alone and the lithium is participating in this compound, lithium sulfate. So the identifiable feature of any single replacement reaction is Look for a single uncombined element reacting with a compound. And notice whether or not it replaces one of the elements in the compound. All right, so the next thing on our agenda is a brief discussion about why some reactions are not single replacement. I've written two equations for you on the board behind me. And these are reactions that aren't single replacement. We actually have a combustion reaction and what we call a synthesis reaction but they can frequently be confused with single replacement, and I wanna talk about why and how to avoid this mistake. Now, the reason why some students think these might be single replacement is because they focus in on the single part. They remember that single replacement reactions feature a single element, and you'll see that in both of these, we have that. In the combustion reaction, we have oxygen, which is in a pure, uncombined state. And in this synthesis reaction, both the sodium and the chlorine are uncombined solo elements. So what's the deal? Why are these not single replacement? Well, they're lacking the replacement part. Remember that in a single replacement, that single element has to knock an element in a compound out of its position and replace it. That's not happening in these two examples. The oxygen is not simply replacing the carbon or hydrogen in this compound we see something much more complex happening where the oxygen is actually combining with the carbon but also combining with the hydrogen. So there's no direct replacement happening in this first example. Now let's look at our synthesis reaction. Here you'll see that it's lacking a compound at all. Every single replacement reaction should have a single uncombined element reacting with a compound. And in this synthesis reaction, we do not see the compound present and that's why neither of these would fall into the category of single replacement. Question, is it the case that every time we have a single element reacting with a compound, we're always going to get a single replacement reaction? The answer to that is actually no. Single replacement reactions only occur if the single element is what we call more active than the element in the compound that it's reacting with. So how do we know whether or not the single element is more active? Well, we need to refer to something called an activity series. This is a table that organizes single elements based on their ability to replace other elements. Now, this is typically not memorized. It's usually a reference chart that you're allowed to use during a homework assignment, project, or exam. So let's take a look at the two reactions on the board. In the first one, the single element is barium, and it's reacting with the compound magnesium hydroxide. So because barium is a metal, it has the potential to replace magnesium 
also a metal. But we have to look at the activity series to see whether or not barium is more active. We notice on the activity series that barium is higher up on the chart. It's above magnesium. That tells me that it is more active and therefore will be able to replace or substitute the magnesium, which is why on the product side, the magnesium is now alone and we have a new compound, barium hydroxide. Now, what if we tried to carry out the same reaction, but sort of in reverse? You can see here I'm starting with magnesium as the single uncombined element, and I'm trying to react it with barium hydroxide. Now again, in order to predict whether or not this reaction would take place, I go to my activity series. And I notice that magnesium, the uncombined element, is below barium on that chart. In other words, magnesium is less active than barium. So what happens when I mix these two? absolutely nothing. This NR is an abbreviation for no reaction. So if you can visualize this, you put some magnesium into a test tube with a barium hydroxide solution and nothing happens. So we don't want to assume that every time we have the beginnings of a single replacement reaction, a single element and a compound, we're always going to get this substitution or replacement happening. We always want to be careful to check an activity series table and make sure that the single element is higher up on that table. And if it is, we know that the reaction will occur. All right, so let's put what we've learned into action. Here on the board, I have two different reactions. And imagine that we're asked whether or not they're single replacement and what the products of the reactions might be. How would we deal with such a question? Well, first of all, Knowing whether or not they're single replacement is a matter of looking for the single element and whether or not it's reacting with a compound. And you can see in both of these instances, that's exactly what we have. Now to go further and actually predict whether or not these reactions are going to happen and how they happen, we've got to use our activity series to do that. Let's start with the first example. Here we have iodine gas. Iodine is a halogen, a non-metal. That's really important because that means it would only be able to replace the element in the compound that's of a similar nature. In other words, another halogen or nonmetal. So what I'm actually thinking about here is whether or not iodine is going to be able to replace the fluorine. It's not going to be able to replace sodium because that's a metal. They're too different from one another. So now I take a look at my activity series. When I do this, I notice that iodine is actually lower on the activity series for halogens than fluorine is. Remember, lower down means less active. Upon seeing this, I know that if I actually carry out this reaction, I'm not going to see any results. There is no reaction that's going to take place because iodine is less active than fluorine. OK, let's go to our second question. In this situation, we have magnesium, which is a metal, and it's reacting with copper sulfate. So magnesium may or may not be able to replace the element in the compound that it's most similar to, which would be the metal copper. Metals can only replace metals, just like halogens can only replace halogens. So I go to my activity series, and what I notice is that magnesium is higher up on the table than copper is. This means magnesium is significantly more active. So in terms of completing this chemical equation, what I'm going to do is replace the copper with the magnesium. So the first thing I'll do is just write copper as a single solitary uncombined element. And then I'm going to make a new compound by combining the magnesium and the sulfate. Now it's always important to be careful when writing these new compound formulas to consider the charges of the ions. We know that magnesium, when by itself as an ion, has a charge of 2 plus. And sulfate, a polyatomic ion, has a charge of 2 minus. So because these two ions have equal but opposite charges, they will combine in a 1 to 1 ratio, resulting in the formula MgSO4. 
Now, the last thing we always want to do is make sure our equation is balanced. And you can see here that this example works out really nicely. There's one magnesium on either side, there's one copper on either side, and there's one sulfate on either side. Now, we can go a step further. If our theory is correct about how to use an activity series and what a single replacement reaction is, we should be able to carry out this experiment in the lab and we should see a reaction. So let's take some magnesium strips, let's combine it with a blue copper sulfate solution, and let's see what happens. Okay, so let's see how effective this video was in helping you understand single replacement reactions. In our first practice question, we have a multiple choice situation, and we're asked which of the following reactions is an example of a single replacement reaction. Please pause the video, come up with an answer, and then come back for the solution. Well, I hope you picked letter B. In this option, we have a single element, fluorine, replacing another halogen, chlorine, which is part of a compound. This is the best answer. Letter A would be classified as a synthesis reaction. Letter C would be known as a decomposition reaction. And finally, letter D is an example of a double replacement reaction. Okay, on to the next question. Please use the activity series provided to predict the products of the reaction below. What we notice here is that the single element is a metal, tin. We then find the metal in the compound, which is aluminum. Now we have to go to our activity series and compare their positions. When we do this, we notice that aluminum is actually higher up on the list than tin is, which means aluminum is more active. So is tin going to be able to replace aluminum? No, it's not because tin is actually less active, being further down on the list. So to answer this question, we would simply state that there is no reaction, which can be abbreviated NR. Another way of writing this is to simply write the same reactants on the product side, because again, this means that nothing really happened. We have the same exact stuff that we started with. Okay, everyone, thank you for watching and supporting the channel. And I'm not sure if you know or not, but I do have an Instagram account. And if you follow that, you'll be updated every time I post new content. And I also like to add in some little extra stuff there, fun things that are happening in the lab. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.